Hello everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made this really cool layered gelatin cake that had some isomalt decorations. So I learned a lot when I did this cake. This took me three times to get. Trial by fire. I learned a lot along the way. And I want to share with you everything that I learned. So if this sounds interesting, we'll get right to it. So while I'm showing you how I am getting this cake ready, actually first I'm going to explain this. That bottom tier did not come out of the pan right. So I wanted to show you how you can fix that. When I have a layer that does that, I actually like to put that on the bottom. And then I just kind of spackle it together with some chocolate ganache. Now we're just going to layer up this tall cake with the chocolate ganache in between the layers because this is a very tall cake and this acts as more of a cement than a buttercream would. But I did want to mention that I was inspired by another creator and I am going to link that in the description. I also put three skewers through the cake to secure it while it sat in the freezer and firmed up before I did this first coat of uh, ganache on the outside of the cake. Those skewers are gonna hold it in place and I wanted to chill it so that it was not feeling like it was gonna push over while I was putting on my ganache and then the buttercream. So definitely chill your cake in between layers. Definitely do, especially with a tall, thin cake. Now we're just putting on the layer of buttercream. So this, this gelatin cake is gonna have just buttercream underneath the gelatin. One of the things I learned is you want to have a stable buttercream. Otherwise, it will want to um, kind of seep. So I would highly suggest using high ratio shortening in replacement of butter for this buttercream. I mean, if you wanna go ahead and do a Swiss meringue or an all butter buttercream, go for it. I just found that um, shortening, high ratio shortening based buttercream would be a, a safer bet. Now I'm just making gelatin is what I'm doing by the box instructions minus one cup of liquid. And I'm adding, I took one cup of, I'm sorry, it would be half of the liquid for this first part, You're gonna, the blooming part, half the liquid that the recipe on the box calls for. Because you want this to firm up more. Um, you don't want it to be a soft gelatin, you want it to be a firm gelatin. So definitely reduce the water. And then after it bloomed for five minutes, this is a large quantity. Um, you wouldn't do this much normally when we make gelatin, but I would highly suggest using a lot of gelatin. I did eight recipes is what I did for this. No kidding, eight recipes. So I added some flavoring. You can use uh, Lorraine's flavoring into it, the gelatin to add some flavor because the gelatin is just plain to begin with. And I'm just using gel food coloring to add color to the gelatin. Um, what I'm doing is I'm taking some out, adding the food coloring into it, and I'm using that brush to make sure I get all the little bits incorporated. And then I put it into the rest of the gelatin. And I did that with four different colors. And let your gelatin cool. Definitely set it aside and let it cool. You don't want it to be warm, you want it to be room temperature right before it starts to firm up. Otherwise, it could melt your buttercream. So, what I'm using is my, like I said, my expandable cake round, and I am actually just measuring, getting it to the size. I want it to be about a half an inch, quarter of an inch to a half an inch away from the cake all the way around. And then I'm using, this is 12 inch tall acetate sheet that I cut to size. Set it inside of your ring and make sure that it's up against the sides of the ring and use some tape on the inside to kind of act as a barrier so that the gelatin does not leak through. And I'm using, wearing gloves when I did that to pre prevent um, getting some smudges or fingerprints in it. And I just did a little ring of buttercream underneath to kind of lock that in place and then I'm doing another ring of buttercream around the outside to prevent seepage. Now you're going to want to put that in your freezer and let that firm up before you start adding the gelatin. And to make my straw longer, this is how I'm going to get the gelatin in there. I took two straws, cut a slit in one, kind of folded it into itself, slide it, slid it inside the other one and just sealed it again with some more tape. 
And this is how you put your gelatin in. I just slide that straw all the way down, use a squeeze bottle, and just squeeze, let that gelatin slide in. And then in between layers, you're gonna put it in your refrigerator, not your freezer, put it in your refrigerator for maybe 10 minutes in between each layer. Do not put it in your freezer. Another thing I learned, that when the room comes to room temperature again, um, after they have firmed up, it can cause condensation, which again can make your gelatin and your buttercream seep. Use room temperature or your refrigerator. Room temperature, it would take longer. So refrigerator's okay, just don't leave it in there too long. Now, to make the geometric isomalt toppers, I'm making the isomalt as the directions say, and then I'm just put some um, nonstick spray. I rubbed around the outside edges of these metal cookie cutters. Now don't use plastic, it will melt them. Metal, use metal. And I used the same food colorings, which were peach, some um, ivory mixed with uh, pale pink to make a blush color, and then I used corn, no, it was delphinium blue, and then mint. But I did not add much color. I wanted this to be more of a pastel kind of a look because I wanted you to be able to almost see through to the cake in, in the middle of your um, gelatin. Another little helpful hint here. Um, do not do this without gloves. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. I'm just used to this. And I know um, that you have to be very careful because isomalt can definitely cause some very severe burns. See, I'm just kind of testing it out there, gave it a minute. Once they have dried or cooled, which does not take long, maybe 10, 15 minutes, you can kind of coax them out from your cutters. And yes, that one did break, but I'm gonna show you how you can just remelt it. With isomalt crystals, once it has come to temperature um, on the first heating up of it, you can reheat it a couple of times melt it down again and use it be again before it will get cloudy. And then I like to use my blowtorch to, um, or my cranberry torch to kind of even out the isomalt in the center. Cause it kind of likes to cool on you quick. So you can have some lumpy bumpy things. I would go ahead and just kind of heat that up, but be careful not to hold it in one place too long because it can actually um, melt your silicone mats. Be careful of that. And like I said, I did this with all of my colors. Another note, leave your gelatin, once it's applied to your cake, in the refrigerator overnight. There are two days involved here, but you don't see that, so leave it overnight. I'm pressing down on these cutters to kind of score the isomalt so they come out a little easier. And you wanna make sure that it is all the way down to the silicone mat so that it doesn't um, just fall apart when you try to pull it out. And I'm kind of pinching the cutter, pinching it in to try to loosen it up from the sides. Take your time doing this. It does take a little while, but it's well worth it in the end. And this here is the next day. And what I'm doing is just removing that buttercream barrier before I remove the cake ring. And wipe off the excess with a damp cloth. And just release it and pull it up. And I'm just using a, an X-Acto knife to cut that tape to remove it from the cake. Now this cake is, the gelatin is set fairly firm since it had been done overnight. And one of my trials, I tried to remove it after about four hours and it was set up, but it was soft. So definitely leave it overnight. And to attach these, I'm using a combination of piping gel and buttercream. Now I'm not gonna lie, they are kind of hard to attach to the gelatin. So I would definitely, the ones on the side specifically, attach those last minute. And then the ones on the top, I just cut a slit and stuck them in. So there it is, guys. I hope you liked it. And I do hope that you give it a try. And if you do, please send me pictures on Instagram. I would love to see your work. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to 
Check out my other social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.